So digging into the data, one thing I want to stress up here at front is that there are two different types of observational data sets, both completely independent that were used from data collected here on the Earth in order to arrive at this result of 32 minutes for the orbital period change. And they're both completely consistent and supporting this result that we've heard of this 32 minute orbital period change. Um, if I could have the first animation, please. The first data set and method used by the DART team uses optical telescopes here on the Earth. And so these optical telescopes here on the Earth can never actually tell the difference between Didymos and Dimorphos. As it looks to these telescopes, this asteroid system is always just a single point of light. But that single point of light changes in brightness with time, as seen by these telescopes. Because sometimes the little asteroid Dimorphos passes in front of the larger asteroid Didymos and there's a little bit of a shadow. But then other times, it actually passes right into D Didymos' shadow. This is a Dimorphos eclipse. And so you can see from these eclipse events that the telescopes see a decrease in the overall brightness of this asteroid system every time that this happens. And then you can also see that these eclipse timings are very much related to the orbital period of Didymos around Dimorphos. So by measuring when these eclipses happen, you can determine what that orbital period is. So ever since uh, the event on September 26, two weeks ago, these telescopes have been observing this system nightly. And that's what you see going across here on this graph on the top. Just this nightly telescopic data, night after night after night after night, all added up there. There's actually four different telescopes on the Earth that have contributed to making this graph so far that you're looking at in this result that we're presenting today. It's the Las Capanas Observatory in Chile, the Las Cumbres Observatory Global Telescope Network with facilities both in South Africa and in Chile, and the Danish Telescope in Chile. And all four of their data have excellent agreement and are all just overlaying on top of each other right here. Additionally, the DART team has two independent research groups that have looked at analyzing this data separately, and they have come to exactly the same conclusion. So this is also then showing two examples of this much larger data set blown up, to, so you can see the actual data on September 29th and on October 4th. And what you see very clearly in that data is these dips in brightness that we were just talking about with that animation. And these dips in brightness were confirmed by these two independent research groups, and they are consistent and indicate that the orbital period of Dimorphos around Didymos currently is 11 hours and 23 minutes. What you can also see here is that it is not consistent with being 11 hours and 55 minutes as it was prior to DART's impact event. Um, and this is a very strong conclusive evidence. The team is very confident in of this 32 minute orbital period change. Now the second data set that was used independently is planetary radar. And the planetary radar facilities used were the Goldstone Observatory in California and the Green Bank Observatory in West Virginia. What's nice about planetary radar is that in contrast to the optical telescopes, you can actually distinctly get signal from both Dimorphos and Dynamos directly. And this is an important distinction. So the Goldstone Observatory in particular has been tracking the position of Dimorphos uh, regularly every night for the last two weeks, roughly. And from those, they have also been tracking that this is an 11 hour and uh, 23 minute period currently for Dimorphos around Didymos with a 32 minute orbital period change. If I can have the last graphic for me please here. Additionally, on October 4th and October 9th, these radar facilities were able to get some direct images of the Didymos and Dimorphos system. Here you see Didymos, um, but also directly in the image, you can also get signal from Dimorphos. And so we're directly imaging both of these asteroids and getting their positions relative to each other. And the position of Dimorphos is consistent with 11 hours and 23 minutes for its orbital period, and it is not consistent with being uh, what the orbital period was prior to the DART impact, which was 11 hours and 55 minutes. And so this is and just another example of these two independent methods all giving you this same answer. So this is a very exciting and promising result for planetary defense to have this orbital period change of 32 minutes. It's within the range um, of the models that have been uh, studied, but it's also definitely indicating that you're getting an enhanced deflection due to the amount of ejecta, that rocky material that's being thrown off when DART's collision happened. 
I think it's also, though, important to put this into perspective of a kinetic impactor technique if you wanted to use this in the future, potentially to deflect an asteroid. This is a 4% change in the orbital period of Dimorphos around Didymos. And it just gave it a small nudge. But if you wanted to do this in the future, potentially, it could potentially work, but you'd want to do it years in advance. Warning time is really key here in order to enable this sort of asteroid deflection to potentially be used in the future and is part of a much larger planetary defense strategy. I prepared two videos. Uh, the first one shows uh, the last seconds before the impact. And you can see uh, the, the change, basically a little change in, uh, in, uh, in the little dot, which is the morphos, showing the ejection of the, of the material. But of course, a second video we prepared uh, shows what actually happened during this uh, approaching of uh, the morphos, and the flyby and the turning of the, the satellite and, uh, and uh, getting far away. So we, what you can see in the second video is actually the approaching from 700 kilometers of distance, then the flybys where we went very close, up to 59 kilometers from the, the uh, from the Morpheus. and then uh, you can see um, well, while we are getting more far away of about 300 kilometers. So I believe what you are seeing here is really, really fantastic. I remember the night when from the control center um, at the Argotech uh, premises, the, our, our prime contractor, we started looking at those images. We, we couldn't believe our eyes that actually we made it. And we made it thanks to this fantastic collaboration with, uh, with colleagues from NASA, and we are really, really proud of that.